Hey fellow humans! So yeah, over the last few months, I haven't exactly had my own mountain bike to ride and I will actually talk about why in a video coming up pretty soon. But because of the situation I've been in, I've been riding a lot of the downhill bike and the gravel bike, which you guys have seen. But I've also had a, the opportunity to ride a bunch of really, really cool and dialed loader bikes, all with their own unique personalities. I have never ridden a plus bike before, and so when Asan Ali from the Trek Stash Facebook group um, hit me up and asked if I wanted to try one for a few weeks, I could not pass the opportunity. <laughs> so thanks Asan, the bike was really really cool to actually experience. So what I have here is a Trek Stash 7. It's a plus bike hardtail with 29 by 3.0 tires. I am about 5'8 with a ridiculously long wingspan and I'm about 130 pounds. And this Trek Stash 7 is a large with a 445mm reach and a 60mm stem and I think something like an 800mm wide bar. So yeah, it is kind of big, um, but reach wise it wasn't too bad. What got to me though is definitely the seat. It is too long for my short legs, but I mean Trex is, I should probably be riding a medium, but the reach wasn't too bad. I mean, I, last Yeti I rode was 476 mil reach, and I could ride that, so. Anyways, how I had this bike set up. Well, it's got a RockShox Yari up the front, so it's got this, the really simple motion control damper, which actually isn't too bad. I ran it at 85 PSI in the front with three clicks of low speed compression, and that was pretty much in the ballpark. As for tires, there was a Bont Rager XR4 in the front and an XR2 in the back, and they were both 29 by 3.0, and it was running 16 PSI in the front and 18 PSI in the back. Now I know a lot of you plus bike guys are thinking, whoa, that's crazy high. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really feel comfortable running low pressures. I think supporting the tire is better and more important than actual traction. And 16, 18 PSI was like the lowest I was willing to go. And even then it felt a little squirmy. So what do I think about this bike? Let's go through the pros first. This bike has amazing traction. Like the grip is ridiculous, especially for anything loose. Um, all that loose kitty litter stuff was amazing. Any off camber section, amazing any low speed section you need grip amazing the sprinting traction amazing anytime you put the power down you can just like put the power down and not worry about spinning that rear wheel out the braking traction is ridiculous like if you've got strong brakes you can just brake and you will stop <laughs> you don't really need crazy modulation on these things it is very, very hard to lock the wheels up. It is pretty rad. Especially now with this world we live in where we're affected by the pandemic, there is definitely a lot more people out in the trails and such, at least in, out here in California. I've had to do a few emergency stop, slow down situations, and it stops me every single time with plenty of room to spare. Bump absorption is pretty good if we're talking about low speed bump absorption. Yeah, if it's a low speed, the wheels are so big, and if it's like multiple stutters, the wheels are so big, you just roll over them. So, low speed bump absorption is pretty darn good. Every once in a while, it kind of makes you forget that it's a hardtail. Yeah, which really like gives you the confidence to ride it harder, which is really, really, really cool. But just be aware, man, every once in a while, when you become way too overconfident, it will remind you that it is not an enduro bike when the tires start to squirm or or all of a sudden it starts to like remind you it's a hardtail. Because it was a hardtail, um, even with the soft tires, dude, it pumped very well. It pumped through flow trails, pump tracks, roots, natural terrains, everything pumped pretty darn well on this thing. This bike is a bruiser of a bike. Like, it doesn't really need much finesse or technique to ride, I think. You can point it in a straight line and it will just plow through a bunch of stuff. 
if it is not too steep. And I'll explain why in the cons in a bit. However, when you get in a situation where the tires start to give or if it starts to squirm, it is a pretty big bike and you do need proper technique to muscle the bike back to your will. So, in my opinion, this bike is really easy to be a passenger on and, be and come out okay on the other side, but the moment things start to get violent or hairy, it takes a little bit of technique and muscling to calm the thing back down under your control. So keep that in mind. All right, so I've also been riding this thing probably outside of its intended use. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually handling free riding or some degrees of free riding pretty well. The bike actually handles drops not to shabby. If you case a landing, if you case a double, it's actually not too harsh despite it being a hardtail. It does squirm a little bit, but it's not very harsh, so that's kind of cool. But yes, if it takes a hit hard enough, it will squirm. I actually went down on a six footer the other day. I mean, it was really blown and the landing was way harsh where the tires squirm and folded on me. And you know, me being stubborn, I just kept holding on the bars. So I actually dislocated my left thumb. So that's that. So there, yeah. <laughs> that said though, this bike is pretty impressive. It handles the loam really well. It handles loose, blown out, sandy, kitty litter stuff of a hard pack really well. So if you were to do the Baja Divide or something, plus tires might be a thing you might want to look into. The sound these tires also make are pretty scary. Like it sounds like a tank when you're <laughs> but yeah, this bike is pretty darn fun and the whole time I've been riding it, I was just scratching my head because it's, it really is unlike anything I have ever ridden before. I just could not understand what was going on. I had a lot of fun. Oh, one more really cool thing about it is because of this chain state or rear, rear triangle design they got going on on the drive side, you can actually run a belt drive on this thing which is pretty cool. Not really my thing, but if it's your thing, that might be a thing to consider. So yeah, so fun, fun bike. Pretty capable of a lot of kinds of riding. All right, now let's talk about the cons. Tire squirm. Tire squirm is a major problem with plus bike tires. People are telling me for a 130 pound rider I should be running like 12 PSI and stuff. I don't know how I could ever do that. Even with 16 and 18, I'm already feeling the squirm. In the corners, you'll have grip, 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 grip. And if you try and cut you to do a little bit more, it all of a sudden squiggles and bounces off laterally. You will feel the tire fold. It's a really scary feeling when that happens. If you watch the ride videos on this on this bike, you'll hear me say, oops, squirm, oops, squirm, a lot. Um, when that happens, yes, it takes technique and some serious muscling to bring it back under control. So that's something to keep in mind. Big loads and side loads, it will happen. On steep drop-ins with uh, roots, rocks, or tech, or anything with successive hits and steep drop-ins, you will not have the grip you have been accustomed to on things that aren't as flat. Now the reason for this is because what actually ends up happening is you start bouncing over all the successive rough stuff and if you're not touching the floor your tire grip doesn't matter if you're not touching the ground. <laughs> so that's that to consider. Maybe a full suspension plus bike might be better with that but that was my experience with the Track Stash 7 hardtail. I also found it a little hard to steeze off some lips, like especially when you're trying to like throw a whip or muscle the bike around on a lip. Um, it kind of handles a little bit differently than trying to throw a regular bike off a lip. Um, I don't know if it's because when I'm when you try and like bring the rear end or, or style something out on a on the regular tires, the tires get to slip a little bit off the lip, and these don't do that as much or it's because the seat tube was definitely way too long for me. 
um, at 470 mil or something. Yeah, I would have preferred something like 420 mil. But once again, this is a large and it's a size bigger than what Trek thinks you should ride at my height. When I use the dropper for climbing, I'm essentially using like 30 millimeters of dropper height, maybe even less. <laughs> so there's that to keep in mind. The seat tube length was definitely something that gets in the way if you do try and size up for the reach. Now, one more thing to consider with 29 plus tires is that your BB drop is ridiculously low and a lot lower than your rear axle. Now, when you think about it, the lower the BB is, the bottom bracket is in relationship to the rear axle, the harder it is to generate leverage to create lift to rotate around that rear axle. So usually, I mean, I would say if you're not taller than 5'10", you probably don't want a 29er in the back um, because you probably have short legs. That said, I was managed to actually bring the front end up quite a bit. It's not too bad, but when I try and pull off jumps and drops and stuff, a lot of the times I either really pull over pull and really lift up the front end and every once in a while I have to like tap the rear brake to bring the rear end back up to like nose in for a landing or I just don't pull enough. That could have been caused by the really high BB drop. So that's something to also consider. So this bike really isn't for everyone, man. I had a lot of fun riding it, um, just learning what plus bike tires were like. But for me, the tire squirm was definitely too big of an issue. I'm a guy who likes higher pressures in my tires, especially if there are no inserts or tubes. Um, for example, on my trail bikes for 27.5 by 2.4 with 130, 140 mm travel, I would run 26 and 28 in the back. And with this, I was running 16 and 18 in the back. And that was still too squirmy for me. So yeah, if you're a rider who likes to get a little aggro or likes to throw the bike around, who likes to really, really push, probably not the bike for you as control is a thing. The grip's amazing, don't get me wrong, but control's definitely a thing. That said, if you're looking for more comfort on trail rides and just like a chill, good time, maybe this might be it, you know? But yeah, thanks Asan for the loaner bike. This has been really, really fun and to be able to experience a plus bike for myself. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Click here, subscribe. Click here for something else. Maybe click here for some videos of the last time I rode this thing. And uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.